The boys stress us out to no end tonight. However, they do exactly what they have to do and beat the Baltimore Orioles 6-4 at Rogers Center, improving to 89-71 and on the year. It was not easy by any means. You had a 6 nothing lead. It ended up being 6-4 in the 8th with 4 runs in the 8th. And they had the bases loaded. But you found a way to get out of it. Romano locked it down. And you found a way to hang on to the 6-4 win. A win is a win at this point in the year. I don't care how pretty or how ugly it is. Just win a damn ball game. And they did. Now, scoring-wise, nothing happened for the first few innings until the bottom half of the third, where Danny Jansen comes up, and Eshelman to this point has been throwing meatball after meatball after meatball. The Jays are just getting underneath, just underneath it, just underneath it. Or line drive right at guys. And we're like, what the hell is going on here? But Danny Jansen's like, you know what? If you don't get under it, and you don't hit it right at somebody. You hit it way to left center field. And it is way gone. For Danny Jansen, a two-run bomb. Espinal comes in to score. And the Jays are up 2 nothing. All right, we're feeling pretty good right now. You got a lead, a multi-run lead in the bottom of the third inning. Steven Matz to that point, absolutely cruising. Great stuff. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. And a play I want to talk about. Vladi gets a sacrifice fly, Right? Biggio comes in to score. However, he's at, he ends up being called safe initially. I believe he got overturned and he got called out. And that's a big play because it keeps the game 2 nothing. And to, in that fifth inning, at the end of five, you're still only up 2 nothing somehow against the Orioles. Luckily, Steven Matz is absolutely dealing. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. And the Jays are like, all right, you know, enough of this nonsense. Corey Dickerson comes up, and he hits an absolute missile to right field into the second deck. And the Jays extend their lead. They get that extra run. It's 3-0. And that run right there, I, I, I took a big sigh of relief after that. Because it felt like before that, but in between the first, three, first two runs and that third run, it felt like there was just a, a wall of you're not getting anything more the rest of the way. So to see Dickerson go deep, and give us that extra run, it felt nice. Now, they weren't done in the inning, though, because the Jays broke it open here. A couple of batters later, uh, Danny Jansen comes up again, and he rips the ball to left field. In comes Santiago Espinal, and the Jays now have a 4-0 lead. All right, we're feeling pretty good. Then Kevin Biggio hits an RBI single. Yeah, you heard me, Kevin Biggio, back in the lineup for the first time in quite some time, and he made a massive impact today. We'll talk about that very shortly. Bijou singles, Jansen scores, it's 5 nothing Blue Jays in the 6th, we're feeling great, and to this point, Mats is on fire. Pitch count low, 6 shutout innings, we're feeling unbelievable with Steven Mats on the hill right now. Then George Springer hits a little number to in between 2nd and 1st, but the guy was shifted over, so he had to go all the way across, and Kevin Bijou, being the incredibly smart base running runner he is from 2nd base, obviously... Ball on the ground the other way. He's on the move. He sees the ball's in the hole. He turns and rounds third. Hands home and he slides in. He's safe. A massive run for the Blue Jays there. And it, pay, it, it literally paid off to be a, a, a massive run considering how this game ended up turning out. So a big job from Kevin Biggio scoring on that play. Giving Springer the single in the RBI as well. And the Jays up 6 nothing. You're feeling unreal. Steven Matz goes out there for the top half of the eighth inning, and he gives him a solo bomb to Gutierrez. And then he gives him a base run. Right? And then we're like, okay. And he gets the boot. In comes Adam Simber. Adam Simber game, then gives him a two-run bomb to Pat Vileka. It's now 6-3. They have cut the deficit in half, just like that. We move ahead now. They have runners on, and and Mancini. Well, no, Mancini hits a single. No, he didn't hit a single, or he did hit a single. But let's let's go. Let's go before that single for Mancini. Ground ball to short could be an inning-ending double play. Bo to Simeon to first. They call him safe at first. And if you go back to a play that happened earlier in the ball game, and the Jays got the benefit of the doubt, they called him out. It was close, but this one looked a lot more definitive to me. They end up calling him safe. They review it. They call him safe. And I'm like, what? Really? 
That's quite uh, interesting. Interesting, because uh, then the next batter is Trey Mancini. I don't know, was it that? Either way. He hits an RBI single to right field, scoring Cedric Mullins. It's 6-4. You move ahead a little bit. Hey, the base is loaded now. And thank God. Jordan Romano had to come in for the five-out save. He threw a ton of pitches tonight. He definitely ain't going tomorrow. But he hits a ground ball to Espinal, touches the base, ends the inning. And every single Jays fan, whether you're at Rogers Center or where you're watching on TV, everybody just went, okay. Okay, okay, we're, we're good. We're, we're alive. We're, we're, we're alive and well. And Romano goes back out there for the ninth and dials it in and gets the job done. Pick it up the save, throws over 30 pitches, and locks the game down 6-4. It wasn't pretty by any means, but a win is a win at this time of the year. Now, we know what, we know what happened with the Red Sox. I'm assuming they ended up winning. They were up 4-2 in the ninth. The Yankees were down 4-1 in the ninth. I'm hoping and praying that finishes it with a loss, even though you can't even miracle to even catch those guys. But hey, anytime they lose and we win, eh, you never know. But uh, let's get to the stats here real quick. Corey Dickerson. Was phenomenal. Again, he went two for four in the game. Scored a run RBI on the home run that he hit. Even the, It was an absolute missile that he hit to right field. It was, it was a really nice shot from Corey Dickerson. Santiago Espinal now hitting over 300 on the year. He went two for three with a run scored. And he walked once. Three of the four times he came to the plate, he reached base. Espinal, man, he has been playing some fantastic defense at third base. As well as the bat has just come around for this kid. It's been phenomenal to watch. And Danny Jansen loves playing the Orioles, and he showed that again today. Two for four in the game, two runs scored, three RBIs, and the two-run bomb that he hit from Danny Jansen. Big job for DJ today. Hey, Kevin Bisho. I haven't seen the guy play in quite some time. Goes three for four in the game, scores a run, gets an RBI, and that run scored was a hard-earned run score from Kevin Bisho on the, on the George Springer single, as we talked about earlier. He was fantastic in his first game back. Big, it was, it was much needed because with Vladdy having the day off at first base, you need, and he was, he was pretty good at first base too. You know, there was a ball, I, I, I can't believe, I can't remember who threw it. It was offline, he goes off the base, gets it, and tags the guy. Big, that's a huge play. Then, yeah, I think, I believe he had one or two scoops in the in, in the game, too. So, Kevin Biggio held his own at first base and went three for four in the ball game. Great job from Kevin Biggio in his first game back in quite a while. 12 hits total for the Blue Jays. He only struck out three times. You don't expect many Ks from the Baltimore Orioles. But a guy that I want to mention, Oscar Hernandez, man. I mean, he is mightily strong. I believe two of the three strikeouts in the game were him alone. He was 0 for 11 in the series against the Yankees. We talked about that yesterday. And I, I, he didn't have anything today, and he struck out twice. He is mightily struggling right now, but you can't take him out of the lineup because you can't afford to at this point in the season. So he's just got to find a way to dig deep these last two games and give it his all because the Jays need them both. Now let's get to the pitching staff. And with all the runs that were scored in the sixth inning for the Blue Jays and the way they hung on for dear life at the end, Steven Matz's start might go a little overlooked. But he was spectacular. Seven innings, allowed six hits, two runs, five strikeouts, and he only walked one guy. And I believe the, the, well, the two runs and the one walk, well, one of the runs was the Simber home run. It was an inherited run. So that run counted towards Matz. And then the solo bomb he allowed, I believe the walk was when he left the game. So majority of the, the other six innings, he was phenomenal. Mixing his pitches well, the changeup had a lot of bite to it today. And that was really nice to watch from Stephen Matz. Adam Simber went, two, uh, went a third of an inning. You know, he allowed two hits, two runs, and it wasn't pretty for Adam Simber. Jordan Romano came out there, though, and locked the door down. An inning and two-thirds. A lot of the one hit, it was the Mancini single. And not having the bases loaded against him, but he seems to have ice in his veins because he strikes out three, walks one, picks up the save, and the Blue Jays hang on to win this 1-6-4. Tomorrow is the one game that I'm very scared of. Look, Alec Manoa is on the mound for the Blue Jays, and I have the utmost confidence in him. You are facing John Means, easily the ace of the pitching staff for the Baltimore Orioles. It's not going to be an easy one by any means, but as we've said all yesterday, we said it today, and we'll say it again. You need to win that ballgame. You lose it, you're pretty much done. 
You need an absolute miracle at that point. Steven Matz, or not Steven Matz, John Means, Alec Manoa is the pitching matchup at 307 at Rogers Center tomorrow afternoon. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the game this evening because you were out of your seats and you were sweating like crazy, smack the like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys not already. Comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from today's ball game for the Toronto Blue Jays? And I will talk to you guys. No, Twitter's down below. Follow, follow, send me a damn to that great stuff. The Instagram link is down below as well. So follow up there. If you have not done so already, I probably already said that once, but it doesn't matter. And I will talk to you guys Leafs edition. I believe they play Sunday in Ottawa. And uh, that's obviously the final game of the year for the Toronto Blue Jays. So we'll be able to get that final video out of the way. Hopefully we're talking about something a little bit different in the end of the season. But we'll talk to you guys post-game Leafs edition in their fourth preseason game. It's going to want to get the season going already, but got to get through those first. All right. And as for the Toronto Blue Jays, I will talk to you guys post-game tomorrow. John Means Alec Manoa, game two of the three game set against the Baltimore Orioles, 307 first pitch at Rogers Center. A must, must, must win for the Toronto Blue Jays. It's not going to be easy with John Means on the mound. You got to dig deep and find a way. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.